Hello, my name is Evela Averels and I work for the University of Antwerp, Belgium. This ILSA project video will give an overview on how to be able to listen to audio in language A and reformulate in language B while using speech recognition. We continue to build on what you have learned in the previous module, that is the modules on subtitling, on simultaneous interpreting and on intralingual respeaking. Before we explore working alone or working with an editor, it is important to go over the broadcast delay. The broadcast delay is the additional time that the broadcaster is creating for live subtitling between the recording of a television program and the moment it is broadcast. Delay is not décalage. An important question for which you need an answer before you start is have you been given broadcast delay? This delay, often about one to five minutes, gives the re-speaker the time to listen to the audio input and re-speak it, translating the text and creating the subtitles required for the broadcast of the live program or live show. The delay also allows for teamwork involving a group of re-speakers, translators and editors who can monitor and improve the final output, and in some cases, an additional person who is then responsible for transmitting the result live on air. Unfortunately, a broadcast delay is not always granted. An editor works with the re-speaker to edit the re-speaker's respoken output. Editors edit text before it is queued live. Editors focus on various types of errors, such as typographical errors, errors caused by the speech recognition software, and they can add content that a re-speaker may have missed out. An editor can make interlingual re-speaking easier because their interventions allow the re-speaker to focus on the live translation that is, listening to the source audio in one language and respeaking it in another language. The respeaker can solely focus on respeaking without monitoring their on-screen output as much and without having to correct errors live. Working with an editor may mean that the respeaker has more time to respeak more text which in turn could result in fewer instances of loss of information. The editor edges the task of the re-speaker a little closer to that of an interpreter still. However, the re-speaker must also voice punctuation marks, which the interpreter doesn't have to do, and must consciously take the editor into account. Although this figure has been used to outline the intralingual re-speaking process of working with an editor, it is also useful for interlingual re-speaking. The figure offers a temporal representation of the live subtitling process as it is carried out at VRT. One person watches and listens to the television program as it is broadcast live in one language and re-speaks it into the speech recognition software in another language. The speech recognition software turns the recognized utterances into text, which is a draft subtitle. Any errors that are made by the re-speaker or by the speech recognition software are corrected before they are put on air. Error corrections can be made by a re-speaker or by an editor. The concept of delay refers to the time that elapses between the moment the re-speaker hears the audio input and the moment the final subtitle appears on screen. This figure illustrates that all parts of the re-speaking task is completed by one person. So here, the corrections are made by a re-speaker. In this example, the re-speaker takes on the task of the editor. This method can be applied to simple programs with low speech rates. When a re-speaker is their own editor, as usual, they should try to speak in short sentences 
and pause regularly. As the speaker pauses, the spoken output is released on screen, so the speaker should monitor their output to check for errors. If the speaker spots an error, they should aim to correct it by using voice commands, the mouse or the keyboard. When self-editing, it is normal for the decalage to become a little longer as the speaker corrects their own errors. Therefore, to keep up with the text, a speaker may need to summarize more information while maintaining the main ideas, then went to work with an editor. This figure illustrates that the corrections are made by an editor. Sometimes the speech rate is too high for one person to respeak and correct errors on their own. In such instances, a respeaker and an editor work together to correct errors and synchronize the subtitles before they go on air. No matter who is correcting the errors, they must correct the respoken output quickly. In terms of broadcast delay, Assuming that you have a delay of at least one minute and you work in pairs, you will have time to prepare well in advance for your assignment. You could create a terminology list, a list of names, practice all terms in your lexicon. Create custom comments for terms that your speech recognition software does not recognize. The respeaker must pause at regular intervals so that the speech recognition software can process the audio. Respeaking in short ID units or sentences is ideal for this. The respeaker must then perform a manual operation, either at punctuation mark and then press enter or immediately press enter. This releases the respoken text to the editor so they can start editing the subtitle. This way of working is the same for television and for conferences even if you do not work with subtitling software at a conference, but with a full screen on which almost an entire page of text is projected. Why does the respeaker have to release the respoken text as quickly as possible? Because the corrector listens to the respeaker, and if the amount of respoken text becomes too long, it becomes difficult for the corrector to remember all that has been said and subsequently check the written version. This may also cause the corrector to lag behind too much. A word of caution, even if an editor is present, it is still important to keep thinking in function of the speech recognition. For example, it is better to type proper nouns to avoid misrecognitions. Make sure you help the editor where you can.